<laughs> All right, man. I'm going to bring up my best friend in the world. Um, I'm his godfather. So, um, so Jane and Jane, Jane and James are like cousins, God's cousins <laughs> to Patrick. <laughs> and uh, man, six foot something. You had to put him over the baptismal font, <laughs> you know, because we're Catholic. We don't like dunk. Because, you know, like, hey, man, a little bit on the forehead, you're good. Holy Spirit's there. But anyway, I want to introduce you to him, man. He's my best friend. And, man, Patrick, come on out, man. Woo! All right. Okay. Thanks, bro. That was awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, Alex. Thank you very much, Jenny. Um, hard to follow those guys, especially Jenny. That was really good stuff. So welcome, my name is Patrick Connors. Right. I was hired by Alex and Ginny Abian, and my home hotspot is Cincinnati, Ohio. Woohoo! Woo! So, um, you know, Andy talks about the stuff that we have to go through in life, right, Pam? Like he says, either we just came out of some stuff, you know, like, ew, or we're stuck right now in some stuff, like knee deep in it sometimes, or we're headed towards some stuff. But that's just life, right? Isn't that what he tells us? And the, the culture that I've learned from the Alliance and the culture that Alex has always taught me and what Andy has, has spread the message is, it's going to be okay. Yeah. It's just the struggle before the victory, right? So since everybody likes a, a train wreck, right, everybody, and, and you're, not, you're not a proper American if you don't rubberneck when you see the crash site, I thought I'd share with you a train wreck. You wanna, would you like to share one of my... In fact, maybe some of you guys were standing in this same exact pile of stuff. I can't wait to hear if we were. So um, one day, Suzanne and I were coming back from a conference, Tia, and we went flying over a mountain, and we just kept on flying, and I don't know what happened, but the car was total. That's about the last thing I remember. It's a miracle we made it. And when the whole thing was said and done with the finances and the hunk of metal and the totaling out and the insurance, this is about how much money we got out of it. And this is about how much I still owed on the car. You with me? So we were upside down on our loan. I didn't have any money to pay off the loan or get a new car, Kyle. I didn't have any credit so I could go get myself something nice out there. You with me, Cameron? And I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. So I called Alex Abian. And I said, Alex, what am I going to do? And he said, well, come on over and we'll talk about it. And I said, I can't. I don't have a car. <laughs> so he's like, all right, I'll come over there. And he was giggling when he got over there. He, see, Alex doesn't like stress about this, the struggle. He's not like, this is going to be the best struggle ever. <laughs> like, this, let's document this struggle. He's already thinking about the victory, right? So he was like, Patrick, it's going to be okay. So let's think what we can do here. What we need to do is find a really old, beat up car uh -huh. that will, like, you can get it cheap. You know, you could probably get some spare change from your sofa and buy one of these kind of cars. You probably need a Toyota Camry. You probably need a Honda Accord. You need one with like 300,000 miles. On. I'm like, whoa, 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 this is good stuff. Let me write this down. So, you know, I grab a pen and I'm like, say, what did you say? He goes, a Toyota Camry. I'm like, got it. Or what was the other one? He said, a Honda Accord. I said, why those cars? He said, Patrick, they'll go forever. I mean, you can drive them forever, like 500,000 miles. I, he didn't make it seem to me like this was going to be a clunker. He made it seem like I had hope, like I had an option, Terry. You with me? So I was like, okay, so what are they again? A Toyota Camry or what was the other one? He goes, a Honda Accord, right, a Honda Accord. Toyota Camry or Honda Accord. Got it. So... <clears throat> I got this, no problem. Toyota Camry, Honda Accord. So I chose a Volvo. <laughs> and it was the most beat up thing you could ever imagine. Oh man, I have no idea why that popped into my head. Something about, it'll last forever. I was thinking Volvos last forever. But man, that car was so much fun, Jane. I remember the first time I was driving it home, pieces were falling off of the car. I was looking in the rear view mirror, I could see stuff. You know, and it would make all these noises, like it was mumbling and sputtering and complaining. It was BMC in the whole way home every time I hit a bump. And I think it sounded, you know what it sounded like? A new agent who's just come out of the negative world into the family and, ha and hasn't read Inside the Circle yet. And they haven't heard Paul Roberts talk about love conquers all. And they haven't heard Tim Goad say love is unconditional. So they're all, you know, like Jenny was talking about, remember? 
So, but I loved this car. We had so much fun in this car. And, and it, it sounded different. Would you like to hear how it sounded? Okay, so I get in my car and I'm driving, <laughs> driving down the road. And you know, most cars, they go like, they go, Ray, re, ri, ro, ru, like that, right? My car didn't do that. I think, I think, I think my car was Swedish or something, because it was like, it would just go, Ray, re, Have you guys ever, have you ever flown on a jet airplane? You been on a jet airplane? That's what it sounded like. That's what my Volvo sounded like. And, but I didn't care. I really didn't care at all. In fact, I, I, I barely even noticed it. You know why? This was not a car. Uh -huh. This was a rolling university, yeah. right? So, and Andy was talking about popping tapes in, pop the tapes in, you, you young people, whatever. But they, they're called cassette tapes. And I would pop a cassette tape in, I'd be listening, you know, ring, and I'm listening to, uh, I think maybe one was like Alex Abian or one was Mike and Noel Levintovich. I remember there was a bootleg copy of a tape. We weren't even supposed to have this. <laughs> this, this people, can I say this? Statue of limitations expired. There, but, but there was one guy on there, Adam Katz was on there. And he was talking about, did you know there was a second flood? It was like Noah's Ark point two or something like that. He drove through this crazy flood, but he said on his first weekend ever with the Alliance, he made more money than the previous whole month as a school teacher. And I just kept like, rewind, play, rewind, play. I'm like, I like this, this is good stuff, right? So then, and I would listen to, uh, I remember, oh, Fitz on the phone. Guess what that one's about? Fitz on the phone. <laughs> Like, he wasn't, where's the levels? He wasn't an SBM like he is now going EBM. He wasn't even in the blue trapezoids. He wasn't a green square yellow trap. I'm really not sure if he was even a red dot yet. He wasn't training. He was recording himself setting appointments so he could listen later to get better. Isn't that brilliant? But somehow we got a copy of it. So it was, it was a hoot. I would listen to that. But my all-time favorite speaker, maybe it's yours too, who was it? It was Andy Albright. I mean, we had tapes on urgency and how to manage leads and he, but my favorite was when my man Alex Abian and a buddy sat next to Andy Albright and put those little cassette recorder and pressed record. And Andy said, come on, give me everything you got. And they were rifling different objections at him. The, the things they heard when they were calling clients or the things they saw Nick when they were in the home. And they were just blasting him, Terry. And a Andy was just coming back, back, like bam, bam, bam. And the tape was called All the Objections. If you could find a copy of that thing, it's, it's golden. You're not gonna find a copy of that thing. But anyway, so I was listening to that, but what was I really listening to in my car? I was really listening to the same message, tape after tape after tape. It was, what do I want? How do I get it, right? That's pretty much all it was, plus a little bit of shicky boom mixed in, right? <laughs> so I'm sitting in my car like, Rrr! and then all of a sudden, um, one day I had to pop the tape out and flip it over. Again, oh. you millennials. You, so I popped it out, but not all the tape came out. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. This is my rolling university. <laughs> so I'm like trying to get it out of there. and I'm like, it's like one of those magician scarves. I'm looking in there's ramen noodles and like mom spaghetti. What is this? And there's like Rapunzel's in it. I'm like, what am I gonna do? I was freaking out. So I called Alex. I said, Alex, what am I gonna do? He said, Patrick, it's gonna be okay. It's just the struggle before the victory. I'm like, okay, I can do this. So I thought about it and I thought, I don't need a car to play the tape. I'll just put my little recording device right next to my ear and crank the volume all the way because ring! You know, what do I want? How do I get it? What do I want? How do I get it? Shake a boom, right? And then have you guys ever, have you ever felt like a loss of hope? Like serious business, not smiling. Like you're so crushed, your spirit, like, the world is caving in around you. You can't breathe like you're squeezed. You felt like that before? Like you, you, like you thought the sky was falling? Well, that's the way this car was too. My car felt the same way you did. Because one time I hopped into my car and I thought, that's weird. I, maybe them vitamins are kicking in because <laughs> either the car shrunk or I'm getting taller. And then I looked up and the sky was falling. It was actually falling. Like the liner was like sagging down. 
And I was like, this is weird. What the heck? So there's like some cork in there, apparently, and they spray it with green, like orange glue, and then they slap the fabric on. That's how they call it a, a ceiling or something. Well, that glue died like 100,000 miles ago. <laughs> So I was like, okay, no problem, I got this. So I would screw, like I was screwing, a little corkscrew, I just screw it in. So it was like, you know, it looked like curtains, screwing them in. But those little corkscrews are sharp on the end. So I was ripping it and tearing it and slashing it. It looked like Freddy Krueger up in there. So, which didn't seem like a big deal until I went over my first bump, kaboom. It was like Christmas time in Tennessee. It was like orange Christmas snowflakes all over the place. It was in my hair. She was on my clothes. This was crazy. And I was like, well, who cares? What do I want? How do I get it? What do I want? How do I get it? Right? So I didn't have a cell phone back then. This is my tape. This is my tape player. So you guys know this is my tape player. Okay? So then I'm driving down the road. Hey, one more question. If it's raining outside, you with me? And you're inside, do you get wet? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Are you listening, Volvo? Are you listening? So I'm in my car, you know, I'm just driving down the road, and all of a sudden, slap, slap, slap. Okay. Slap, slap, slap. The windows are shut. The doors are shut. There's no kids in the back squirt gunning. What the heck? And I was like, well, actually, it's kind of refreshing. I mean, there is no air conditioning in this thing, so. But the problem was, that water that was leaking in was mixing with that orange dandruff on my shoulders. It was like some glowing, pulsing, you know, plutonium, some kind of radioactive, ugh. So I had to find the leak. So where was the leak? Well, look, can I turn my car for you? So facing this way, the window, normally when you press the power button, it goes like this, zip. Isn't that what happens? Like, is that what your car does? Zip. This one went like this, zoop. So like where the seatbelt was connected right here, the post, there was like a big gap right there where the window is supposed to be. And all that water was like just smacking me, smacking me. I'm like, what, how am I going to solve this? Like it didn't work. So I thought about it. I thought Alex would be laughing already. I'm like, you know what? I got this. I got this. No problem. So I, I got out of the car. It's raining. Got out of the car, opened the door, <clears throat> and then took off my shoes. <clears throat> okay. Then I licked my hands like this, and I rub them together, and they get kind of hot, a little bit sticky, a little bit sticky and hot. You can do this if you want. It's kind of fun. You can try it at home. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it meets the Stephen Davies ISO 3001 hygienic standard. So, I was like, Arr. and then I would like use some like uh, Karate Kid Bolitnikov thing with my big toe on the door and like pull the window back while he went up like that. Bam! It worked. I couldn't believe it. It was like an Andy, Al like a Andy uh, Riddle or an Andy Albright uh, jump. Oh, never mind. That didn't work. So anyway, so I'm back in my car. Everything's great. I'm like, I just did some Formula One precision pit stopping right there, you know. Woo! And then I pull into McDonald's and open the window again. Ah! <laughs> what was I thinking? Over and over. And you know, I couldn't keep pulling out of the car to do that in the rain. I had to figure out how to do it while I was driving. So I was like, how's, I, how's this gonna work? So I, I set my cassette recorder down, my set, cassette player down, and I started driving with my knees a little bit. And I, licky, licky, rubby, rubby, licky, licky, rubby, rubby. And then I reach over with this hand and pull it back this way, zip, closed, voila, it worked. Can you believe it? So there you go, that's what I would do, like ring, Slap, 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 licky, licky, rubby, rubby, boogie and I down the road. What do I want? How do I get it? Shicky boom! That's what I did. Everything was working great, except do you guys have brothers and sisters? Do you have brothers and sisters? Do you have brothers and sisters? Do you guys fight? I'm pretty sure the windshield wipers on my Volvo were brothers because they were always like going at it against each other. Like what are windshield wipers supposed to do, right? Squeak, 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 squeak. Not these ones. They were like, Squeak, 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 squeak. And then they would like do this. And it was only like three squeaks. I mean, the windshield wasn't even dry yet. And they would like start fighting each other. So oh, I've got to pull over, open the door, get out, run around the front of the car to this side. Then I had to like do something, Jerry rigged this little, mm, wrestle with it, then run around over here, ha, got it fixed. Oh no, the door didn't work. 
Ah, oh, it's not like Diane Lampy's house. They didn't start with the door and then build the car around it. I, was, I couldn't get it. And there's cars, cars coming by splashing me. What am I going to do? I got, so I ran around the front of the car, opened up the passenger door, leaned all the way through, opened that door, pop it into traffic, mess those people up driving like this door, like, ah, right in front. Then I come back over here, hop in my car, woo, reach, slap, 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 okay, red, red, wait, 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 wait. And I just boogieing on down the road. And then I heard a flap. Have you guys ever heard a flap? I mean, like, what's a flap? I don't even know how to spell flap. And I kept hearing it, flap, flap, flap. Well, it turns out the way this Volvo's windshield worked was they just set it there, and they put this little black rubber uh, weather stripping around the outside. That's all that was holding it in place. So um, the, the corner of it over here started to come up like this. And the faster I would drive, Jane, the more it would be like going, like three inches, it was just fluttering. Nine inches, it was like smacking. And it got about two feet, it was flap, 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 flapping. I didn't mind the flapping, because I was listening to Andy Albright. But I was afraid the windshield was gonna pop out. That would have been a big problem. So I pulled over the car, come out, run around to the front of the car. I was beating that thing until it got back into place. Then I ran back to the front of the car again. Ah, oh, I forgot the door. So I gotta run back over here. Open the door, reach in, open the door, throw the door into traffic, come running around over here, hop back in the car, bam, heading to EVP again. Are you guys with me? And I loved it. I loved every minute of that car. It was the best. I kept doing it. I was doing the do. I was, you know, going to the hot spots, chasing down Alex and, and Andy. And one day, I was pulling up in my driveway. And it was a new driveway. And I saw some cars in the driveway. And they were my cars. And there was five of them. And we had like a little minivan because I think that there was a time we only had five kids or something. <laughs> but then we were like seven or eight and she was threatening to have more. So then we got one of these big, one of these big extended vans. So there was a couple of vans, there was a Lexus, there was a BMW. And I just, like, like I pulled the Volvo up onto the grass. I saw my wife on the front porch with our biannual baby. <laughs> and I just, I, I just pulled the key I pulled the key, I just pulled it out, and it did a Blues Brothers. It went, <laughs> And I walked up to the door, and she gave me a kiss, and she said, you've got to throw that thing in the trash. And about that time, a lawnmower guy came up the driveway and said, man, I love those cars. And my wife said, you can have it. Grab my keys, <laughs> throw it at the guy. I'm not making this up. He's like, well, I feel guilty just taking your car like that. She said, leave 100 bucks under the doormat tonight. Next morning, there was a plastic baggie with $100. That's the last I ever saw of that Volvo. <laughs> What's the whole point of that story? We all go through stuff, right? If we don't quit, we get to laugh about it later, right? <laughs> so I wonder if any of you were in that same pile of stuff with me. What have you made it through so far? You don't want it to be wasted. What are you in right now? You can make it through. What are you facing uphill? Come on, it's not a big deal. At, like Alex says, like Andy says, it's going to be okay. It's just the struggle before the victory. Thank you for letting me tell my Volvo story. I appreciate it. That's a lot of fun. Do you need this thing over here? You don't? Okay, cool. You guys think, he, you think he's amplifying that. It was really like that. It was really like that. Early in the business, man, we were like, we, had, we didn't just want to make 100 grand. We poured all our money back into building the business because Andy was pouring all his money back in the business. It was delayed gratification, right? We weren't going to buy these cars or anything. We were just, we poured everything back in. You know, make a couple hundred grand, we put, I mean, we just leveraged it. That's why we've made millions of dollars over the last 20 years because we kept doubling down, doubling down. We kept doubling down our time, our money, and our emotion in this business. And man, that, those are some of the fondest memories that I have, and it's great to look back on it. And so you all are going through the same thing. Write your story, because as you're going through the struggle, the victory will be so sweet. I promise you, man. That's good stuff.